What's up YouTube? KidMoto22 here, coming today with another mod. Why am I doing another mod? I can't ride. It's still cold outside. So, any of you that know me know that there was two things on my bike that I didn't like. Number one was the shifter level. Shout out to Percy and Bolts. Number two was the air cleaner. The air cleaner is what I'm going to be addressing today. So this is what we have. The Arlen Ness 15 spoke inverted series air cleaner. This I am really, really excited about. Uh, this is going to be a really good mod. It's going to be a lot of fun to put on and it's going to be even better for the performance of the bike. So, you know what? Let's get after it. Let's do some unboxings. Take a look at this thing. We'll set these things aside and uh, let's get to the install. So the first thing we want to do is remove the cover from the old air cleaner and then once we get the cover off then we get to remove the backing plate behind that cover. So removal of an air cleaner and installation of an air cleaner is really not all that difficult but in terms of what it does for your bike it's pretty significant, the uh, performance increase that you can see. All right, so there we go. Cover is removed. And now we can start removing the actual air cleaner itself. So we'll remove the air cleaner and then we'll remove the breather tubes. And then we take the top part of the air cleaner off and we get We'll get to the backing plate um, behind that. We can set this aside and then we'll pull those off and so you can see the air cleaner itself breather tubes, and that is a little dirty, no doubt. And we'll take the banjo bolts out here, and this will be pretty much ready to come off. I'm removing the stock banjo bolts. And the air cleaner pops off just like that. So you can see the throttle body in here. You can also see um, the inside of the throttle body. There's a little bit of oil in there. So we're going to use some cleaner. We're going to clean all that off. Get this all cleaned up and then we're going to be removing this mounting bracket here and we should be good to go. We're going to have to use um, a wire cutter and cut the uh, connection to this um, to this cord right here and then we should be good to go. That's connected to um, this bracket. And I'll probably use this opportunity to clean up in, our, in and around here too. So I'm going to clean out the inside of the throttle body. I'm going to clean up around the engine here. I'll be taking the, um, the bracket off and clipping this part right up here um, that holds the, this wire in here in place um, that's connected to the throttle body. So I'll be clipping that off. And then this area around the throttle body and the inside here needs to be cleaned. Um, be very careful when you're cleaning in here that you're not pushing 
or putting any pressure on the barber five valve that's on the inside but you can see there's a little bit of oil in here and so all of that i'm going to clean all of that up so that's nice and clean when i put the new um, air cleaner on so let's get to this part of it and we'll go we'll continue on so to clean up the inside of the throttle body you're just going to want to use a little bit of brake cleaner so I have some brake cleaner here that I'm just going to throw on the rag, and that will get that entirely cleaned out. So you can see there's some oil on the inside of that throttle body. Through this cleaning process, if you get any any more grime on the inside of that throttle body, you're going to want to clean that out again. So I'm going to go ahead and continue kind of cleaning this. I'll, I'll clean out the inside of that throttle body again, just to make sure that I haven't gotten anything in there. Probably clean it out um, just before I connect the new air cleaner back on there, just to make sure that there isn't going to be any gunk that's going to go into the inside of the engine. Okay, and the last part is just getting this piece of this bracket off. Being very careful that I don't want to snip any of these wires in this process. And there we go. That bracket has been removed. So once again, wipe out the inside of that throttle body. Get that nice and clean. So the next step is gonna to be to install the throttle body badge. And that's gonna go right in here. So that's just a Arlen Ness branded throttle body badge. And it just covers up the where that bracket was in the throttle body. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the throttle body badge. And I'll be using just a little bit of, of the uh, standard blue Loctite when I put the uh, the badge in place. So I'll just put a little bit of the blue Loctite on there. All right, so we have the, the throttle body badge. So that's all in place. And so the next step is to install the O-rings. So we have the plate here, and this is gonna go in place just like this, okay? And there are O-rings that go in the inside of here, and here, and the inside of here, and here. So we apply a little bit of grease, and then we put the O-rings in place, and then we'll be putting the banjo bolts in. So I'm just gonna use a dab of the grease here. That right around on both sides. And fit the O-ring in place there. And the O-ring in place here. So we have that first part done. And then we'll be installing the oil reservoir on to the back plate, the backing plate. Okay. Once you have the oil reservoir installed, you can move to the next part. So you're going to install the next two O-rings, and then the banjo bolts will go and hold that in place. All right. Again, putting a little grease in here. And on this side,
and we'll drop the O-rings in place. We have those ends. We have the O-rings on that side, and we have the O-rings on this side, both ready to install. So before we put the backing plate on, there's two more things that we need to put in there. So we have the gasket that goes, the backing plate gasket that goes on, and then there's also these vent tubes. The vent tubes slide, in, slide into the slots that are right in here, and they will aim directly into the throttle body. Like so. And like so. All right, so now we'll, we will uh, seat the gasket. So the gasket can be seated against the throttle body like this, or you can seat the gasket inside of the backing plate in here. Either way, there isn't, uh, there isn't a wrong way to do it. Either way, it tells you to put some grease on there and that kind of just holds it into place. And then there is a little bit of a notch cut into it, and you can see the notch on the throttle body. There's also, also a notch on the backing plate. That makes sure that the gasket's seated in the correct place either way you go. So you can either put the grease on the throttle body or you can put it on the inside of the backing plate. I think I'm gonna put it on the inside of the backing plate to, to make sure that I don't get anything on the inside of the throttle body, um, specifically any grease on the inside of the throttle body that might, um, that might gather some, uh, you know, some materials. So when doing the install, the bolts that are going to go into the backing plate here, these three bolts are going to use 10 to 12 foot-pounds of torque, and the banjo bolts that are going to go into here are going to require 18 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get everything put into place. So I'll get the banjo bolts, and I will get the gasket put on, and the three bolts to get the entire backing plate um, installed on here. Okay, so I have it seated and I have the banjo bolts and I have the banjo bolts and I have the gasket seated in place. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just kind of finger tighten one banjo bolt on one side. And I found this to be the easiest process. So I'm gonna finger, to finger tight the banjo bolt on one side just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the other one out and I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on there and then I'm gonna kind of seat it back into place. Let me have my blue Loctite ready here. Again, I'll just begin to finger tighten it. And now that I've got that Loctite into place, I'm going to tighten it just a little bit further than I would have before. go just a little bit on there and holding it into place I'm gonna pull this one out Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm not torquing these down yet. I'm just tightening them just enough so that they are tightened and in place. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the three bolts that go in here. I'll put those in place right now. Now the nice thing is you should be able to reach the gasket from the back of the throttle body. You should be able to reach that gasket right behind the backing plate. So I just loosened it up a little bit and I could reach that gasket. And then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is rather than tightening these down while I have that in the place that I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and insert my bolts and I will finger tighten these down again too. And that will give me an opportunity to have all of these lined up. So again, just putting some blue Loctite on here. And the last one with some blue Loctite. All right, so I'm starting to feel a little bit of resistance as I'm tightening these down. So rather than over tightening them, I'm gonna go ahead and put some some torque on the banjo bolts, get these tightened in, and then uh, I will torque all of them down to spec. Again, 10 to, 10 to 12 foot-pounds for the three bolts here and 18 foot-pounds of torque on the banjo bolts. I have my torque setting set. And the last one. And there we go. So I have the backing plate installed and I have it all torqued down the specs. And then the last part of the install is we put the banjo ball covers on, we put the air cleaner in place and put the air cleaner cover on. So these come with these kind of nifty little pieces here. One goes here, just covers up the banjo bolt. The other goes just like this and covers up the banjo bolt on that side. And then we install the air cleaner itself. Okay, the last part of the install is really just to make sure that you get everything lined up correctly. Okay, I'm gonna put one in and then that will help me line up everything else because I do wanna put the um, blue Loctite on all of these screws all the way around. So one at a time, I'm gonna put the blue Loctite on there. I'm gonna get that all squared away and uh, we'll go from there. Whenever you're tightening these screws, you always wanna make sure that you tighten them in a star pattern. These require 40 to 50 inch pounds, but since I put the blue Loctite on there, I am gonna hand tighten these, but they say 40 to 50 inch pounds. Now, one of the things I really, really like about this particular air cleaner does not require a rain sock because uh, the filter itself holds a certain amount of water resistance. Now, it is not going to be, and I wouldn't expect it to be, 100% water resistant. But because of the material that this is made out of, there is a certain amount of water resistance to this, this air filter, which I really, really liked when I was researching which one I wanted for my bike. Now, there was a couple of reasons why I chose the Arlen Ness product. Um, the biggest reason, obviously, um, being aesthetically, this aesthetically, I think, is one of the best looking air cleaners on this bike, on this engine, to fit the, uh, the way that I have modded my bike. Now, Arlen Ness is a great name. They make a great product. These are solid products, solid air cleaners that are really gonna improve the performance and really bring more air into your bike. So when you compare the looks of the other air cleaner and what that piece looked like, which was all of this, right? All of this material 
and we move to that. And when you also look at the air cleaner itself, this is the size of the actual air cleaner that was in the bike before, right? So you had this kind of big air box and this really small air cleaner. Now I have a much larger air cleaner that's gonna be pulling a lot more air into the motorcycle. So there we go. The install is complete. Well, there we go. The Arlen S 15 spoke converted series air cleaner install. I hope you, uh, you liked what, what I did today. Um, I'm really gonna like that mod. I, I love the way that it looks. Um, it matches the wheels, it matches the aesthetics of the bike, and it really goes with the, you know, the kind of the overall look that I've been looking for. And uh, the performance is gonna be really nice. We'll see, uh, I have, I'll have a video coming up in the next week or so where I will install the FP3 and remap my ECM. So if you like what I'm doing here, give me a thumbs up. I'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, again, if you didn't know, check out the five dirty bikers.